Hello everyone, hope you are doing well. I am João Pedro Ferreira, a Clinical Research Fellow from the Clinical Investigation Center of Nancy, France. And I'm presenting this lecture on behalf of Dr. Nicolas Girard, uh, also from the Clinical Investigation Center of Nancy. And this presentation addresses the number needed to treat, how to calculate it and interpret it. The number needed to treat is the number of patients we need to submit to a given treatment during a time period uh, in order to avoid an adverse event. It was described by the first time by Laupasis in the New England Journal of Medicine as the inverse of the absolute risk reduction. It gained large diffusion uh, because it allows an easy interpretation of the absolute net benefit. And the classic acronym for the number needed to treat is NNT. The generic term of number needed to treat has been criticized due to its imprecision. When there's a risk associated with treatment, we would have a negative number needed to treat. So currently we differentiate the number of patients needed to treat to obtain benefit, number needed to treat to benefit, and the number of patients to treat to provoke harm, number needed to treat to harm. Here is an, an example of the number needed to treat uh, calculation. So we have two survival cur curves. Uh, the, the group A, the treatment group, and the group B, the placebo group. They were followed for three years. So the, the treatment group uh, had, a, had a cumulative incidence of event of 10%, 100% minus 90%. And the group B had a cumulative incidence of event of 30%, 100% minus 70%. So, the absolute risk reduction is 30% minus 10%. And to calculate the, the, the number needed to treat, is the, we, we make the inverse of the absolute risk reduction. So, the number needed to treat is 1 divided by 20%, that is equal to 5. So, we could say that we need to treat 5 patients during 3 years in order to avoid one event. What is in clinical practice uh, the interest of use uh, the number needed to treat? Uh, most, it's, most of examples come on a relative scale and it's the number needed to treat is quite different from the relative risk, relative risk which is measured measure in a relative scale and is used more frequently in the medical literature, derived from the survival analysis. We have uh, this example here. Uh, it's a reinterpretation of the previous example, example, as we see here. So the group A had, had a, a, a cumulative incidence of event of 10% and the group B of 30%. On a relative scale, we uh, can say that the relative risk was uh, is 10% divided by 30%. That is equal to 0 0.33. So the absolute risk reduction is 1 minus 0 0.33. That's 67% of risk reduction on a relative scale. So what the doctor thinks when we, he observes a patient. We can uh, provide an example from, from cardiology practice. So if I prescribe this drug to my patient, will it avoid a myocardial infarction? Uh, normally, the, the authors uh, present the relative risk uh, first. So the, in the previous example here, we would say that we could have a 67% of risk reduction of having a myocardial infarction. But what's the risk of having the, an infarct without treatment? If the risk is low, uh, for example, 1% or lower, in the absence of treatment, the benefit of, of submitting the patient to a treatment is low, so low benefit. 
So we, we say that uh, relative risk overestimates the treatment effect. As we can say, uh, we compare the, the two approaches uh, using the same exam example as used previously. So here we have uh, group A and group B with, with the same uh, uh, incidence of events. So the risk of group A treatment group is 10% and the risk of group B is 30%. On a relative, on a relative scale, we have a 67% a, a of event risk reduction. And if in, in, in absolute scale, we, ha we, we have an absolute uh, risk reduction of 20% and the number needed to treat of 5. So this is quite different from using the, 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 comparing the two approaches. So let's change the, the equation data. And, and compare the, the, the two examples once again. So the risk in, the, in this example, also with a follow-up of three years, we have the group A, the treatment group, and group B, placebo group. The risk in, in group A is 20%, uh, 1, 100%, minus 80%. And the risk in placebo group is 40%, 1, minus 60%. So, in a relative scale, we have uh, a relative risk of 20% divided by 40% that is equal to 0 0.5. So, 50% uh, of the event risk reduction using this treatment. But, if we say, if we use the number needed to treat or the absolute scale, the absolute risk reduction, we would have uh, 1 over 20%, 40% minus 20%, that is equal to 5. So in, in this example, we, do, we would also need to treat 5 patients in order to avoid one event. Al although the absolute risk, the relative risk is lower the event than, than in the previous exam example. So the number needed to treat provides the same evaluation in scenario A and scenario B. And relative risk suggests that treatment in scenario A is better than in scenario B. But the number needed to treat provides a more precise evaluation of the treatment effect because it provides the absolute risk of, of, of the, calculates the absolute risk reduction. So we may say that the number needed to treat is more adapted to judge treatment effect, the amplitude of the treatment effect. This is, in the, when we read the, the literature, we often the number needed to treat is not provided by the authors. But we can also calculate it easily from the figures presented in kaplan meier curves, or if we, if, if we don't have uh, numbers or figures, we can, we can measure the distances between the lines. So here we have another example of a survival analysis. And we, ha we, can, we can measure this, the arrow A, uh, that is in the start of of the study, uh, and then we measure, er and this 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 is a, a, a follow up of ten years. So we measure uh, arrow B uh, in the end of the follow up, uh, and we measure arrow C, and we calculate the distances. So the ten year sur survival, we can we can uh, divide arrow B by arrow A. Uh, that's for the, 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 the curve B that gives a 10 year survival 80%. And for the, the arrow C, uh, we divide arrow C 4.12 by arrow A 6.25, which, 
which give a 10 year survival of 66 percent so the number needed to treat is one divided by one minus 66 minus one minus 80 percent that gives one over 40.4 percent that's nearly seven patients needed to, to needed to be treated during 10 years in order to avoid one event with this with this treatment this is an example how to calculate the the, the survival analysis without uh, uh, if the authors the authors don't provide the numbers in in the paper this is another example we recently published uh, in the American Journal of Cardiology. This is a reinterpretation uh, of an article by Lee uh, and co-authors um, <clears throat> that was uh, released on May 2015. And this, this addresses the temporal influence of uh, an example of heart failure hospitalization, hospitalization before uh, an implantable cardioverter defibrillator, uh, ICD, or cardiac resynchronization therapy with defibrillator, CRTD. Uh, and it analyzes su subsequent outcome in patients with mild heart failure with left bundle branch block. So this is qu quite technical, but uh, basically uh, the 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 investigator uh, the investigators did not provide uh, the the abs the treatment effect on an absolute scale so the hypothesis was that if the the device was implanted uh, if the the patient had been hospitalized uh, the the benefit would would be greater than if the patient would haven't been hospitalized so here we see that curve A uh, is represents patients with no prior hospitalization. Curve B or graph B uh, represents patients hospitalized in the previous year, and curve C represents patients hospitalized uh, m more than a year uh, before uh, trial inclusion. So. Analyzing the, on a, this data on an absolute scale uh, provided in this figure, we may find that the absolute risk, ri, absolute risk different at three years is 11% uh, in patients without uh, previous hospitalizations. And this represents a, 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 a number needed to treat of nine. And in, in patients, uh, with, pre with previous hospitalization more uh, less than 12 months ago, the number needed to treat is 5.6. Uh, also, if the hospitalization is more than 12 years ago, uh, more than 12 months, uh, sorry, uh, the number needed to treat is also nine. So we can we can say that patients uh, with recent hospitalization could benefit, uh, uh, probably benefit for, from uh, the therapy uh, than patients with, without previous hospitalization. And this could be easily uh, um, driven uh, from the, the graph reinterpretation and not by the, 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 rel the relative risk uh, presented by the authors. This is just a, a, a practical example of what we, we did before. Um, and so the key messages uh, from this uh, presentation is the number needed to treat is the inverse of the absolute risk reduction. Its information is easy to follow and points towards the, concer the concerns of a doctor when facing therapeutic decisions. It's very easy to calculate from a survival curve, as we've seen in, in many examples. So this could help us to be critical and argumentative about the results of some scientific papers and helps, uh, surely will help to interpret 
the results uh, of the papers. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoy, enjoyed and hope to see you next time. Ciao.